What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's up guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today we are opening up a pack of Ravnica Allegiance one of the newer sets obviously in the game but one that is very very exciting lots of really cool cards in this one uh, we did get to uh, draft a good bit of this set so hopefully uh, we'll be able to have somewhat of an educated opinion on what we should actually be picking uh, again draft a lot of it I don't know every single card in it but uh, I'm sure there are a number of things that we'll be able to point out as we go through so our first card here homunculus it is a two five for four and a blue and it has hexproof um, normally I value hexproof pretty highly I don't particularly like this uh, instance of hexproof just because it's on a two five for five it's pretty expensive and not a lot of power Obviously, it's going to live a while because of that hexproof and because it has that high toughness, but in general, not a very exciting card, not something I'm looking to first pick. Uh, Storm Strike, an instant for one red target creature, gets plus one, plus zero, and gains first strike until the end of the turn, and then you can also scry one. Uh, again, a solid combat trick. Uh, we see combat tricks come up very, very often. They're usually in every single set. Uh, and they're fine. They're good. They're definitely something that you want, uh, especially in an aggressive strategy where you plan on swinging in a lot uh, or being maybe even on the defensive side of things. You can use them as that uh, as a defensive uh, swing in your favor as well. Uh, and this is a good one. First strike is really, really good. Plus one plus zero. Not huge, but for only one mana, I don't think you can expect a ton. Uh, and then for scrying one, that's obviously a nice little card selection mechanic uh, for the top of your deck. All the stuff that you would want out of a combat trick, uh, but it is still a combat trick. It's not something you want to first pick by any means, so not super interested there. Uh, Civic Stalwart is a 3-3 for 3 and a white. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. Uh, this card is really, really good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, in like a go-wide Boros kind of aggro strategy where you're planning on playing out quite a number of creatures. And then you curve out at maybe 4 or 5. And this is just aiding and abetting that creature heavy kind of strategy where if you've got a lot of creatures out, you play a Civic Stalwart, pump them all up and then be able to swing in hopefully for quite a lot of damage. So lots of positives to this. Uh, definitely so far the pick. Uh, it's just such an aggressive card. It's definitely something I would be interested in. Uh, Carrion Imp is a 2-3 three for 3 and a black. It has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you can exile target creature card from a graveyard, and then if you do, you gain 2 life. Uh, that exiling from the graveyard, um, not usually super relevant. Obviously, there are going to be corner cases if they can bring back a creature or something along those lines. It'll be nice to get it out of there. Uh, but it's not going to be a huge thing that you're going to see make, uh, make waves unlimited by any means. That two life, kind of the same way. I mean, life gain's fine. Uh, it's not really the most exciting strategy, uh, in my opinion, when you're looking at limited because it's really, really hard to build a successful life gain deck. Uh, when a lot of the times you just end up with a bunch of these cards that say, well, I'll gain some life, but you don't really get anywhere. Uh, and so it's not the best thing, in my opinion. It's not a terrible card. Uh, for four mana, you get a two, three flyer, which is fine, and a couple of life generally. Uh, and so that's nice, but I think I'd rather have the Civic Stalwart. It's more of an aggressive card, just does so much more, in my opinion. Uh, Grotesque Demise is an instant for two and a black. Exile target creature with power three or less. So... Now, this actually, I think, becomes uh, a much more uh, useful pick, I will say. So, uh, removal in general is always at a premium. Of course, you want it. As much as you can get is usually pretty great. Uh, black, obviously, being the color that's going to have probably the most uh, just exile and remove target creature, things like that. Uh, in this case, three power or less is not going to be too difficult. You're going to find plenty of targets for this. Obviously, that means you can't hit any big bombs and things like that, but... Uh, th three or less power is still pretty relevant in the early turns of the game. That means you can take out a Civic Stalwart, you can take out a Carrion Imp, you can take out a lot of stuff, uh, and it's exiled. It's not even to the graveyard, which, again, that's not the biggest deal in Limited, but it is kind of nice to be able to just take it out of the game completely. So lots of upside to this. Definitely, definitely love it at instant speed as well. It's just fantastic. 
Uh, Sphinx's Insight is an instant for two, a white, and a blue. Uh, draw two cards at instant speed, but if you cast it during your main phase, you also gain two life. So this is the addendum mechanic. Uh, the Azorius Guild featured the addendum mechanic where you generally would see this on an instant speed spell, but if you played it during your main phase, you get some kind of a bonus. Uh, when I did the initial kind of mechanics review of this set, this is one of the ones that I was actually a little less excited about. Uh, I get kind of the flavor-wise of what it, why it's there and everything, but it kind of takes away that control element a little bit. It incentivizes you to be a little less controlling, uh, which I kind of don't like. Uh, and that's not to say this is a bad card. I think it's a perfectly fine card, but drawing cards in limited is not exactly what I am like super excited to do. It's definitely useful, but it's not quite as good as I think a lot of people uh, kind of assume it is. And then again, that two life, the same with the carry in if it's fine, but it's not really a huge swing by any means. So I think this is a good card. If you're in that Azorius deck, you definitely will want it. But in general, not super exciting. And again, that addendum mechanic, not my favorite. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Burn Bright. Uh, is an instant for two and a red. Creatures you control get plus two, plus zero until the end of the turn. Uh, again, really, really good with stuff like that Civic Stalwart, where you get to go wide, you get to play something like this, and then swing in for tons and tons of damage. This is the big payoff. Now, I will say it's better to have the cards to get, uh, like, a bunch of the early game creatures and things like that out first before you take a card like Burn Bright. But if you are in that strategy, this is a fantastic pick, exactly what you want to do. Uh, just not something you want to first pick by any means. Uh, Cynic Courier is a 1-4 for 2 and a blue. It has flying, and you can pay 1 and a white, and it gains vigilance until the end of the turn. Uh, this is just like a, a wall in the skies is the best way I can, I can phrase this. Now, obviously, if there is nothing else on the opponent's side of the field and with flying, uh, this will get in for a little bit of damage, and even... If you can pay that mana to give it Vigilance, you can leave it up as a blocker as well, which is really nice, uh, and still be able to swing in with it. But it is just a one-point swing. It's not huge, but that big toughness number of four uh, for only three mana is pretty big. It's stalling the skies a little bit, being able to block some things, either even on the ground even. But regardless, it's a pretty good blocker, but that's about it. It's not a very exciting card, in my opinion, and mana sinking is fine. It's nice to have those, uh, but... On something like this, it's not really the most exciting thing in the world, so not super stoked about that. Uh, Azorius Knight Arbiter is a 2-5 for 3, a white, and a blue. Has Vigilance, and it cannot be blocked. Uh, this card surprised me, actually. I will say that. So, being that it's a 2-5, I didn't really think too much of it. Uh, for 5 mana, I would expect a little bit more power. Uh, however, because it has Vigilance, it can block for days, even when it's attacking, and it can always attack because it can't be blocked, it's unblockable. So there's a lot of upside to a card like this. I found it winning games more often than I really thought it would, uh, which is pretty awesome. I like when cards do that. It's a nice little kind of uh, just dark horse of the game. It's really, really cool. Uh, I don't know if it's better than Grotesque Demise. Uh, I feel like there's kind of some contention there that I could see. I'm going to keep them together for now. We'll see what we get in the, the last the last few uh, picks of the pack. But definitely, definitely a really powerhouse card. It's weirdly good, uh, in my opinion. Just a bit of a sleeper, in my opinion, as well. Uh, Enraged Saratok is a 4-4 four, four for 2 and 2 green. Can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. This is just a really solid 4-drop. There's nothing wrong with this card. It's a 4-4 four, for four, 4, so it's on curve. And uh, it has that added bonus of being a little bit evasive against lower power creatures. Perfectly fine. Not super exciting, but it does allow for a little bit more of an aggressive play on turn four. I like that. Uh, but I think there are definitely a couple better picks so far, so it's not super exciting right now. Uh, Knight of the Last Breath is a 4-4 for five, a white, and a black. You can pay three of any color, sacrifice another non-token creature, and then create a 1-1 one -one white and black spirit creature token with flying. Uh, and then this has Afterlife 3, Afterlife being the big Azorius, uh, or excuse me, Orzov mechanic. Uh, when this creature dies, create three 1-1 one -one white and black spirit creature tokens with flying. So... This card, uh, I speculated a little bit on. I could kind of, when, when it was first released, I was a little like, eh, it seems okay. doesn't seem amazing, though. It turns out I found it to be worse than I initially thought. Uh, it just is a really expensive 4-4. That Afterlife 3 is nice. I mean, if it dies, you get some value back. 
Uh, and it adds value, or it's, excuse me, I should say it devalues a removal on the opponent's side of the field. Uh, if you can leave up that three mana and they have any targeted removal, as soon as they target something, you use this ability and you get a 1-1 one, one instead of their removal spell. So it's kind of nice for that, but that's kind of all a losing situation. You're waiting for this to die to get tokens, or you're waiting for your other creatures to die to get a token. Just seems kind of bad. Not only that, you do have to leave up mana, obviously, to activate it. So a lot of downside to this. Not a card I'm very excited about by any means. Definitely not the pick here. Uh, Gates of Blaze uh, is a sorcery for two and a red. It deals X damage to each creature where X is the number of gates you control. Being a Ravnica set, there are, of course, gates uh, in this set. You're going to see plenty of them. They're very, very nice to pick up for cards like this, but not only for that, just for mana fixing purposes as well. Uh, a lot of times in this uh, set, it's very easy to end up in two colors splashing a third. Uh, sometimes you can kind of stick with that two color strategy, but even then, it's nice to pick up a couple gates just to have some fixing. Uh, this card is very powerful. It's very, very good. However, you're going to be playing creatures as well. I don't like picking sweepers like this too often uh, in limited unless I know I'm going to be in a control kind of strategy or shell. I don't know that this early on. I think there are better picks, so I don't think this is what I would pick. If you tend to draft more controlling style, go for it. I mean, give it a shot. Pick up a few gates. If you can get a few, it's definitely worth it, uh, but you, it, it's a little bit finicky. Uh, a lot of times you may not have all the gates out that you need or something like that. And in that case, it just doesn't do anything. So not a super exciting card, but there are instances where this one's good. Just I think there are better options so far. And then our rare unbreakable formation. So an instant for two and a white creatures you control gain indestructible until the end of the turn. If you cast this spell during your main phase, phase, wow, excuse me, put a plus one plus one counter on each of those creatures and they gain vigilance until the end of the turn. Uh, I think because of addendum, this card is good. Uh, again, this favors that go wide strategy as well. This really pushes you into that Boros deck. Boros tends to be very, very good, if I'm going to be honest, and limited just because it is so aggressive. Uh, so normally you can find yourself there. If you play this during your main phase, at the very least, you're going to be putting some counters on some stuff, which is very, very good. They are also going to be indestructible, which is great. And then they also gain Vigilance, which means you can swing in and still leave up all those creatures as blockers. So it just enables for a really, really strong turn. This is kind of a potentially kind of game-winning card. Obviously, you need the creatures to go wide, but I think in this instance, the upside is so high that you do kind of have to take this first. We do have some other good options there, of course. Uh, and we do have a foil, actually. So, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, Bulrak Clan Crusher. Uh, is a 4-4 four, four for 3, a red, and a green. You can tap it to remove a 1-1 one, one counter from a creature you control, and it deals 2 damage to any target. That is a pretty powerful ability. Uh, being able to nuke something, or shock something, I should say, uh, for 2 damage is pretty useful. The fact that it's any target is also really nice, because you can just hit the opponent if you need to, or maybe an opposing Planeswalker if they happen to have one. So lots of upside to a card like this, but I don't really like having to remove the counter. Uh, and it is obviously only once per turn, so you can't just add up damage every single turn, which is a bit of a downside. I think the formation features a little bit more of like a game-winning uh, strategy, so I think the upside there outweighs this. That might be an incorrect pick, but I think that definitely is what I would go with. We do have a guild gate here. There's one, I believe, in every single pack. This happens to be the Rakdos one. They all enter the battlefield tapped, and they tap for their guild colors. In this case, black and red, obviously. <coughs> Not necessarily a good first pick, but honestly, you can start picking those up earlier than you probably think. Uh, it's just nice to have that fixing. Uh, so if there's nothing great in the pack, go ahead and pick up a guild gate. So in my opinion, Unbreakable Formation is the pick. That might be incorrect. If you uh, disagree for any reason, feel free to let me know. Uh, we can talk about that in the comment section. I would love to talk about it. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Back episode.